Welcome to Rags to Resale, the podcast for resellers who want to amp up their resale business the right way. And now your host, the all-knowing, the all-selling, the woman who is always right about everything, at least in our household, my wife, Megan Morris. Yeah. Is that you can make all the rules. Like I can be the MC uh-huh. and then be the co-host. That's right. This is awesome. Yes. And um I love your intro. <laughs> thank you very much. You look very nice tonight. Well, thank you. Look you look very lovely. Thank you. Well, well we are here thank today you. to talk about Posh Live. Some of you may know us from that. Posh Live is, is, is something that's been exploding on Poshmark. Yes, and, welcome um, to we, Rag Street Sale. Yes, we have we are uh, back. We it's are been back. a little bit of a little bit. We've had a hiatus. Yeah. For those of you who are watching us on video, we're in front of our set where we do our shows. Yes, but you can also see and get a second layer to the podcast on our YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And that is Posh Pro Project. So uh, check it out because I sometimes like if I reference something, I'll cover it with video right. so that you can see what I'm talking about. So it's a good reference. Plus you, you should check in to see how beautiful Megan looks tonight. Oh my goodness. See all this flattery that gets me somewhere. It's date night. <laughs> First of all, let's speaking of flattery, we have a big announcement to make tonight. A big, big announcement. It, it is kind of big. It's huge. We've been talking about going to Posh Fest, which is my first, your second year, right? My second year. I was a closet consultant last year. And right. let me just say mm-hmm. that this podcast, Rags Resale, was originally going to be about, you know, lessons learned. It's almost been a year. I was in the beta test group. Mm-hmm. We, I have been doing this for almost a year. We're going to get, when, as fall hits, you know, last year it was previewed in in july august Mm -hmm. and uh it was pretty amazing you know yeah we've had a year doing this and i've sort of been sort of half in half out and the last couple of months because of a lot of success that we've had and some good things that have happened have sort of joined more forces together with Megan. Um, and, and also, everyone loves you. Well, no, I don't know about that, I, but that's really nice of you to say. You're uh, you're testing well. We're the yin and the yang. You test well. Perhaps it works. Whatever happens, it works. We have a really good time. We build community, and that's a big part of why it's been successful for us. And we're going to talk about that today. Because we're all a today. bunch of old ladies on Posh. Fun. But you, uh, we digress. I have to make the big announcement. Did you see how what I did there? <laughs> you did. You did. you deflected. And you took us on a side, a path away from the big news tonight. The big news tonight is that Megan was just notified that she will be one of the marquee prime speakers, one of two or three. I think they said there's three that should have been selected for what's the course called? The Masterclass. The Masterclass in Pasho Live. You know, it doesn't say anywhere that the Masterclass is the key prime thing. Mm-hmm. You're sent, you're interjecting. Well, this. it's a Masterclass. Okay, so well, I'm going to say it's the central focus of the proud. entire Thank weekend. You. I, I am very proud. That. I mean, I would think that Manish's keynote might be um, as big or bigger. Well, you'll be standing right next to him, I'm sure. And not as big. No. <laughs> I don't think kidding. that uh, I can. Uh, Excuse no. me, carte blanche. No. However, it, it's really great. And, and but I do get to have meetings with them up it, until In all day. seriousness, Megan has worked really hard at this, and we, we both have uh, now. And uh, it's really, after years of doing resale, as many of you guys have, you know, in your basement, in your closet, helping to support your family, whatever you do, a few dollars here, a few dollars there. Um, and now, all of a sudden, Poshmark, she became a real success in Poshmark, regular Poshmark. And then Posh Show Lives came along. And um, she's really, really excelled and sort of put together a lot of things. So I want to brag for you if you don't want to brag I, for yourself. I appreciate that. But I, I do, I have to say mm-hmm. that really, and I truly believe this, that my my success, if you want to call it that, is because I embrace the concept that we're all in this together. Right. This particular app works when we work together and it's it they say it it's not a secret it is a social app and it it was as long as I said you know what I believe I believe in this concept this is a new and interesting concept my background is marketing my background is digital media it it makes sense to feed off of each other's energy and goodwill and successes as women because it's been proven time and again that when women work together, we get shit done. Mm-hmm. So 
it just all makes such an mm -hmm. incredible sense to me. Right. And, you know, there's a real sense of community among the people. And this live thing gives us this opportunity to connect with people in a way that you couldn't connect before. And um, I think that's a perfect fit for her and our, both of our backgrounds in media and stuff. So a lot of things of confluence of events that make this very successful for us. But the, no question about it, like positivity, community, um, the fact that everyone's working together for everyone else's success is sort of an underpinning of the things that we talk about. And I think it builds our, 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 our audience. We have gonna, so many good friends now, right, too. Right, we do. Like people that we've never seen in our, in our, in our life before, but we feel like are great friends. And yet. Yeah, right. And but yet. maybe they'll come meet us at Pasha. That's right. Anybody can go to Pasha. That Pasha's would be so be amazing. Great. It's in San Diego, the most beautiful place in the world. Right. right? Why I mean, not? As long as it's not on fire. There. Right. It's gorgeous. And, uh, and it's going to be so fun because we'll have the happy hours and we can all just hang out together right. so please come if you if you can although is it sold out it might be sold out by now i don't know but hopefully you're coming all right hopefully you're coming but we wanted to, this podcast today is about sort of sharing um lessons that we've learned in terms of just over the course of time from the beginning from as she mentioned she was in the beta testing group from the very beginning which helps um, and and have, how we sort of built an audience. We don't maybe have the most people there, but we're doing shows three days a week now. We have a reliable group of people that come. A lot of people who are there to buy stuff. Um, and every you know every different posh show live has a different sort of twist. They have a different mm -hmm. kind of angle. They have a different sort of. I saw a guy rapping the other day. Yes, I, there's all he kinds was, of crazy that was stuff. Cool. Right. I like yes. That. So and, and we and, and this whole platform is so new. People are just coming to it with all kinds of creativity and like, how can I be different? How can I distinguish myself? And the share shows give each right. other an opportunity to right. get uh, people back into the closets, which has been wonderful. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just been a, it's been such fun. Right. And it's become a big deal in our life because, um, you know, we're now making a, a really decent amount of money, which makes a difference in which everybody wants to do. And we're also having a lot of fun doing it. So we wanted to share some of the ideas, some of the things that have been successful for us which may, you know, sometimes other people, I think, approach it different ways. And there's other ways and to go okay. about it. Right. But we will. There's it, other avenues to the same. Absolutely. Event. There's people that are successful to do, do things that are completely different than we do. So this is just our story of what has worked for us. And so we wanted to kind of, I just want to go through a, a list of things that we can sort of, I'm going to sort of interview Megan and we can talk about oh. what it is. Oh, yeah. How about that? All right. All right. Well, there let's, go. we should start at the beginning. So you weren't automatically successful, right? What not? I don't know if we should talk about that platform. Yeah, no, it's fine. Cause... Uh, right, but you you were started on whatnot because you saw people like lots of people. I mean, I was all on Poshmark. I was doing right. well on the in the right. closets, but, but I sorry. thought this was an interesting, fun thing to try. Right, and it didn't go so well because it, we couldn't no. we couldn't build an audience. What was going? What do you well, think happened? Well, like there? our first show, we did really really well, and we right. had a few few I think really the good shows. Algorithm sort of fed us fed there. us that, and then um, but I had this huge <laughs> following on Poshmark you know, 200,000 followers at the time. Right. And it's, you know, more now. And that, and that was before Poshmark announced the lives, right? So they, Oh yeah. Right. And so I went to whatnot and I had to rebuild from complete zero scratch. Right. Right. And there were already people that had been on there doing this thing. And, um, it, it really started, uh, in the gaming world. And there was lots of people selling, you know, cards and video right. games and kind of stuff like that. T-shirts. It was, a, it was really sort of gritty street, you know, and it was right. good. It uh -huh. was really fun and really cool, but, um, we we're making a lot of money. Right. So, um, so then Poshmark Live gets announced. She gets on board early on, um, applies, gets accepted into the early group, which ab absolutely is a big leg up. Yeah. And then we got to figure out what you're going to sell, right? Because mm -hmm. mostly she had clothes in her closet. I mean, I just was going to have a sh different type of show every every time I did it. You know, right. I was like, next up, we're going to do pants or right. <laughs> whatever. Right. We're going to do men's shoes, you know, right. and it, it didn't it, it didn't catch on till we got a, deeper into it. You know, you don't really want to have such a niche for a show, I mean, it, it, sometimes it's fine and it, you know, it works if you need to have a quick clearance and there are people that come in just for that, but you're going to have a very small audience or a much smaller audience. And so then we, you know, we were, what, what, what what's going to work for us, for right? Us, and we right. tried a bunch of different things and yeah. this is when she and Gemma were doing this, her uh, business partner. And, um, and, and then we started doing purse shows, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and so 
all of a sudden the purse shows start well, we to just take noticed off. naturally that whenever we right. did focus on right. purses it was much there was a much bigger audience. right so we're trying to figure out why is this and we we still don't know but i think one of the reasons is that purses are something that everyone uses pretty mm -hmm. much in our audience it's mostly a female audience you know if you have extra small lululemons you know 90 percent of the people that are going to show up at your show are probably unless they're a reseller are not going to fit the extra small lululemon you know what i mean so right. like but a purse because well, they're compression everybody though. can fall in love <laughs> all right also we figured out that people are very passionate about purses mm -hmm. which i had no idea i've been educated mm -hmm. on purse world but people love I, I purses knew. right people I are knew. just like some people are just obsessed with purses and they can't have too many of them and so from a business standpoint that that's a good choice but in terms of building the business then you got to go well it doesn't matter if people like it first of all you have to source it right so um you know there's a lot of things that people like we have to be able to figure out how to get it so we um, you know, through a variety of ways in our area, you know, sales, uh, estate sales yep. and, and different State kinds dealers. of stores, places know that there's a lot of places that we can get purses. Wholesale, Whole, as, well. wholesale yeah. as well. All kinds of different uh -huh. avenues to get them. So, so we have all of a sudden we found people like purses. We know that we do well with purses. We also have the advantage of going, we can source purses mm -hmm. at a price we're in that makes a sense. great location, right, great like location. That i know some people are not in the best place to do something like this and it does hamper you know if you have a lot of thrift shops around you we're in a middle near chicago mm -hmm. the middle of the country you know very wealthy suburbs around right. it so it does it does depend on where you live, and that's an unfortunate fact, you right. know, but it does. But you know what? If we live somewhere else, it might be something else. This it's is the true. thing that works for us. That's exactly right. You would, right? might steer to a different... And Megan is knowledgeable about purses, um, and so she's good with the purses and can speak to the different brands and all the things. So all those things combine to make it to make it be, all right, this is what we have to do as a business. Let's focus, not 100%. We still do on Monday nights. We do some some clothing shows. Oh, because I like stuff. to try yeah, and clothes. Yeah, she likes to try and clothes, and it's fun. She <laughs> dances Monday night, 9 o'clock, Wednesday like night, 9 o'clock, Friday night, 9 o'clock Eastern too. time. Yes, that's part of it. That just kind of happened We need to talk about that. It, that's just who you no, are. Well, there's nothing else to do. I know. I know. And we'll get to that. I have an outline for our presentation. Are you going to ask me some questions? I'm going to ask you some questions. You've been doing a lot of... I have? All right. We are supposed to talk. It is a podcast, right? I thought you were going to ask me questions. All right, let's ask you some questions. Let's talk about building the audience, right? Okay. Because that was the, that's where we started. We, we yeah. were making some money, and we're like, how do we make more money? I mean, I remember when we first started doing the shows that I was obsessed with building the audience. I was panicked about building the audience. Right. And I was doing lots of promotionals. I was tagging people a lot. I was requesting people like things. Um, I, I, I did not enjoy that part. Mm -hmm. And and it, I also may not have been doing it right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like I was, we were, we were grabbing straws. It was just throwing anything at the wall. Mm -hmm. And um, we were doing giveaways. We were trying. I mean, I still say in the beta testing I, I invented share shows you did you i think so <laughs> because i was doing like i was literally venmoing people right after the show and and i was having to send email them labels we didn't have the mechanisms to do a share show that they have since added right. well share shows are not maybe the, the most lucrative but they are something that helps you build an audience and that's what we we're trying to do right yeah yeah that was the thing that really did we, I mean, we started doing That's what brought you in. Right. We, we would do these share shows all night long and maybe not make that much money, but we we kind of got... A, we a, met all of you guys. Right. We met it was people. So, it, was so, we, it was by far the most fun we had all Right. All Absolutely. Week Selling other people's stuff. It, it's yeah. fun. It was very fun. And it built sort of a rapport with us and a rapport with our audience and people kind of... That's people where, were so thankful and right, kind. Right. And it was just really very fun. So. Right. So, I mean, I think as you touched on earlier one of the things that's really good about her and um that we, we the underpinning of all this is sort of this sort of inclusiveness and this sort of positivity because like sometimes you'll jump on a show or somebody sometimes people will jump in our show and say something negative or snipe at somebody and like we don't you know i don't necessarily say anything but our group we don't say that right we're like we don't want any of that there's no there's no competition here if people come in and say oh i'm i'm going to do a show later tonight we're like go, go you know 
follow her, go watch her show. We don't, we try to get to know people, promote you each other. You can watch multiple shows at the same time. Right. And so stuff goes out, the positivity goes out and the positive, positivity comes back. And I think that people appreciate that, right? Uh, yes, for the most part. Yeah. So, I mean, that's been a big part, I think, of what's been the success. Like people enjoy coming and going, you know what? It's just cool. It's fun being here. I mean, I think it would probably be um, a no-no to say, I'm on now. Mm -hmm. well, come on over. <laughs> but besides that, right. I mean, I just think it... I always encourage people to call out their shows, call out their sales, like each other. Um, and as I say all the time in the show, little mm -hmm. known secret, this helps the algorithm. Right. Every time we like something, sh t comment, mm -hmm. so talking in the shows, l following people, which is literally just touching their name. Um, and the love button or whatever. And hitting that smiley face. All of that is simply activity amongst each other and it helps the algorithm right so it's all very good for everybody so it, it was you know and i think we taught people out through the chair show because they could see it happening in real time right and people you know we have both have a sort of a media tv background and um you know people are sort of we imagine and we know that the people that are watching our show are sitting in their bed you know probably in their pajamas yeah. or in their living room you know petting their dog or they coming back and they're telling and, and you're sort of a lot, um, they're allowing you into their household. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like right. people used to talk about Johnny Carson going way back or like TV hosts that are really popular, all people that people are comfortable with. Like they feel like I would, I would, I would like to know those people, right? I feel yeah. comfortable with allowing that person into my household. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think just as a general basic philosophy based on our, our background and sort of who we are, we could try to embody that. You know what I mean? Like. We are just regular people. We're literally, we're in the basement of our house. Our dog comes into the middle of the show. Our kids come down and people sort of relate to that, you know? And yeah. and she can be a jerk sometimes on the air and people can relate to that. See, I was, thinking, and, I was just about to say <laughs> the same thing. You were just about to say the same thing. Okay, all right. Sometimes no. things happen on the show that are just natural between a husband but we're and married. wife. Right, and, and we love each other and we, it's mostly positive. But sometimes things happen. That's what happens. Sometimes it, he's just a pain, no. and you have to, you know, you have to call it out. Well, we, we're not going to argue about that right now. Are we in a fight? No, we're not in a fight right now. <laughs> but occasionally, little things do happen. But again, that is basically, you know, that's who we are. You know what I mean? Like those things. Sometimes she'll say to me, like after the show, like try not to make those noises over there, or say something negative, or whatever. Try not to say. Ah. <laughs> or make yeah. Oh, and no. Sometimes I just do. <laughs> Because when we're doing these shows, we're just being ourselves like we are right now. Like we're not, we're not like trying to be, take on a persona of, you know, whatever posh show live person TV host should be. We're just who we are. So anyway, I, I think that that's a big part of what, you know, some people probably turn us on and go, those people are annoying. You know, that's how it is. But generally people relate to us, you know, and, and Poshmark is. Well, you know, we're not, I, not that there's anything wrong with this. But, you know, a 20-something Barbie doll that, right. that you think, I that wouldn't look like that on me. Right. Or, you know. Well, plus or, the cultural I, references. Like, you know, I, you know, we kind of have a general idea that most people are around our age or a little younger or a little older in our audience, which is kind of the, maybe that's just our audience, but I think a big slash, slice of the Poshmark demographic. Mm -hmm. So, like, the cultural references, the music we play. All the things people are comfortable with, right? Yes, but then there are some basics. Like, um, as you can see here, if you're looking at us on YouTube, it's bright. We are we purposefully are sitting on our set, so you can oh, see... You're jumping ahead in my outline. Uh, I don't know your outline. <laughs> I know. As you know, I didn't read it. Um, I know. But... But no, seriously, seriously that... Right? Yes. There are general things, Presentation too. is is a big part of it. Aside from who we are... Um, we also have to, I mean, you guys, you've seen a lot of shows, you jump into somebody and all of a sudden you're looking at somebody's eyeball nostrils when there's a, you know, and there's some sh bad lighting. I mean, going they've on. seen my nostrils and, <laughs> and mine. cause I have to come up cause I'm so blind, but you know, that's the, generally you've got a nice wide right. shot, you've got a stable camera right. and there's, you know, a, a thematic progression to the show. Yeah. I mean, you need to make. You need to be organized. Things need to be laid out properly. You need to be lit properly. And, you know, as you guys know, when you pop through those shows, some of them just look horrible. And you're, you're just not going to stop. So, like, you... You, you only got to have a second right. to catch an audience member right. so you need, that might want to stay and look at things. Right. And when they, I think when people pop through our shows, they stop. Because you're like, oh, first of all, you can see all this stuff, which they're calling for all the time. 
and it needs to be lit better, which it will. Um, and then, you know, Megan's usually smiling or dancing or something, or I'm running in or the dog is in there or something's going on. You go, well, that's interesting, you know? So presentation, I mean, who we are, but also how you do it. Like you don't want people, you know, you don't want, I don't think you'd want it to be like a TV set that looks like you're watching QVC and then it's almost like too professional. This kind of looks like a news kit set the way we have it on our podcast. It is kind of with the, the we don't usually use this desk like this for the podcast. It's a little bit different, but, but the show feels like our basement and it is our basement and we had an office and I'm glad that we decided to do it out of our house for lots of logistical reasons. Because we can stay up all night and then just fall, crash into our <laughs> Which is exactly what happens. <laughs> we usually start at 9 Eastern and we go until like 2.30 in it the morning. It used to make me so sad Sometimes. that we had to drive home even though it was three minutes away. And people stay with us, you guys. I mean, like, I, maybe for those of you who are, you know, going, why are, who are you guys to be telling us this? And, you know, we're not any more special than anybody else. It's just that we've got, we've got a decent amount of an audience and we start... And, you know, there's 35, 40, buying right, 50 audience, people, buying 60 people, 70 people. 50, and we'll go for six or seven straight hours and never goes below, you know, 45, 50 people. Because I think, and a lot of those people aren't buying. They're just watching, which is interesting. And then there's a lot of people that are buying, which, which is, is totally fine. Right, right. which is fine. We're, we're, we're talking to everybody. Um, but uh, but the people do come to buy our stuff, you know. and um, Well, the uh, that's maybe another one of your, I don't want to step on the price. Do you have <laughs> a is. price line? I don't... No, I probably, well, yeah, I mean. I mean, it, I think that there is some, there is some confusion when you come on a show and the person is just picking prices. And I know that, and people do it that way. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that there should be an expectation of price. Um, whether or not, and it doesn't have to be that you start at a low price all the time, because when you're starting out and you don't have a ton of people in your show, you don't want to start low and just keep giving it away for that price. I totally get that. But at least have your prices inside of the listing. If you know, take a little more time to, to let people know what the prices are going to be just because, um, if you sell one thing for a certain price, you're going to have, a, and I've seen this happen. 12 people drop off because they're like, that's out of my price range. You, you're or, talking about starting prices. Starting which prices. we start everything for $8. Right. But that, and and that's different for everybody. I mean, some people right. start them for $3. Right. Um, and at Irk and I in the morning, she's got a great audience and she starts them real low and they mm -hmm. bid it up and everything. But um, if you're going to, if you're going to put different prices on things, it's fine, but just have it in the listing or just because people are sitting there going, well, how much is that going to be for? Mm -hmm. And you're, you're constantly losing people because they're guessing and they might be guessing wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's just better to give a clear understanding of, of what people are, can expect to pay. And that's why we do $8. Um, because we're a volume dealer. We just want right. people to buy a lot of what we have. And, uh, you know, we go quickly. We have a, a pace that we stick yeah, with. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it like a business, and we, it was a hobby that's kind of turning into a business now, right? And you have to go look at all the different things. Like I mean, not kind of. Yeah, it is a business. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you start with, like, what you can buy things for and then what you can sell them for, right? I got sourcing and how you do it. And then how do you make your product something that people want, right? So this... So we, we have a place we can buy things low, buy our purses low. We, we've built a big enough audience for the reasons we've talked about of purse buyers that we can sell them at a, at a, at a profit. Um, but also that purse has to be perfect. We're buying used purses. So there's a, there's a presentation. Megan is like the purse doctor, right? She's got all the tools over there you can't see. My and it's really important. Like we'll, she'll change a strap on a purse that somebody threw away that we might sell for $100. Yeah. That, that because the strap was just shot and she can fix it. So, you know, we have to be, you have to be able to do that, right? And you have sourcing to have... the, now I'm sourcing straps. Right. So we have your supplies that you have to make sure you keep that, your, what you're putting out low. Right. So your product has to be good. You have to be able to buy it low enough. You have to be able to sell it high enough and, and you have to be able to sell. And this is something we've discovered increasingly since I've came, came on board is you have to do, we're a volume dealer, right? Some other people might start some at $80 and sell them for 250 and who knows what they paid for them. I don't know. We're like, we're starting everything at $8. We get anywhere between sometimes $8, but not usually up to, you know, 150 or $200 for purses, but we'll sell a coach purse, you know, that's really nice sometimes for $40. Yeah. 
But, mm -hmm. you know, that coach purse is probably worth more. That person might be able to relist it on Poshmark and get $80. But we don't care. That's great. We're fine with that. Because, first of all, that brings that reseller to us, right? That yeah. reseller There's comes to us. There's a lot of us. resellers out there. We right. want resellers to come shop. Right. And we, we want you to get great deals. And we have these uh, things at PoshProProject.com, these posh boxes where Megan will send out, like, big chunks of purses for really low prices to people. 12 or 13 of them mm -hmm. and that's another piece of our business right so we're a volume dealer we have we can source it to do it we have an audience to sell it mm -hmm. and we price them to sell and due to those inventory boxes on the website we have to have that inventory right so re whether posh shows were happen are happening or not the inventory is here so we have this great inventory coming in so there's always great stuff and right. it's always changing over and there's, you're not sitting on your product, right? Basically. And we're sell and we also, along those same lines, have to sell a lot of things in a night for that reason, right? Mm -hmm. So speed is really important to us. We do, we do usually one minute auctions, parts sometimes forty five seconds, but usually they're one minute. But what what we really try to do is to first of all, you have to have two people like you for get, the, the to, speed to, we're to going do at. that what we're doing and to do the kind of volume to kind of make anywhere close to the money. As you guys know, if you've watched other people's shows. It's really hard. Some people do it successfully, um, and, and I admire them for it. But in order to do uh, a high volume, you really need two people. So at minimum. At minimum. <laughs> I mean, you could use three people. But we go through these auctions fast. Boom, boom. Next one up, next one up, next one up. Megan's super high energy. I'm over there running, labeling things, pursing, you know, have an organization, this whole system that we could talk about another time. Um, and we're doing a volume. So I, I haven't done the math, but if I was really smart <laughs> and, and a business guy and someday I might do this is look at like in an hour, how many auctions do we have? Uh -huh. How many, you know, did we sell in that hour? You know, how, what were the, what was the median cost? You know, the average. I fear average... that that would turn into McDonald's situation for me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I'm just saying like a smart business person would do that. A counter. We would know, for example, like that nine to 10 o'clock would do the best. Or whatever we, you know, there, you could you could break it down further than what we do. But the point of what we're t doing here is, like, we have to do. We're a volume dealer. We have to sell a lot of purses, and that means moving quickly. I'm literally sprinting back and forth. I mean, I think we need to back up a second and and realize that we're talking to some people that are just literally turning this camera on for the first time, mm -hmm. and and they may not have even imagined going that fast or doing that much, you know, right. but. It's okay. You do sit back and take a moment and go, is this a business? Right. If you can do this as a business, then you do need to start thinking in those terms and not just randomly shopping and spending, a, you know, a, and I, hey, I did this constantly for 20 years. Garage sale, estate sale. How much did you spend this week? I don't know, but look, I made this on eBay. Right. And... Really, there was more money going out than the, coming the, in. The I don't know being the functional part of that com that phrase, and we're we're trying as a business, we're trying to figure that part out. So even if even if you do one show once every two weeks, you have a full time job. I would say, you know, take get twenty really good things, you know, do an hour and a half show, mm -hmm. take your time to get it figured out, make it look good, and move through those and be pleasant and. Uh, bring some energy to it and um, and have good things that are ready and try to not get into these hiccups where all of a sudden you're like, oh, and you know, people are up looking at, like, prepare. It's like anything else. It's like yeah. any other business. Prepare for it. Prepare for your job. Get right. up, get, get up, ready, get and ready. go to your job. Right. And Megan and I increasingly just spend an enormous amount of time getting ready to do our shows. Well, it's your own business. Right. That's, that's and, when you care about something this much, you're going to probably put that much effort into it naturally, you know? But we sell um, 150 things in a night, something yeah. like that. So there's literally 150 things. Yeah. So in order to source, prep, present, and sell, all of that, and ship. then ship, and then two days later, do it all again, that's aspirational. And we would have said that was aspirational a year ago, but all that has happened in a year. So, you know, mm -hmm. and we're... And we've hired a shipping coordinator. Right. We have a shipping coordinator now. I'm making more money doing this, honestly, right now than I am in my other job, which is like a real job. Production company right, right. owner. Not, well, not, maybe not as successful as I'd like it to be. Yeah. But but the point being, you know, this isn't about greed. This is a, this is a, 
uh, a pursuit of passion for her. It has been her whole life together. And the point is that you can. I turn... mean, I, I shop for a living. I love to shop. Right. I shop. She's for a been living. wanting to do this for her whole life. She's dreamed about doing this her whole life. And she said to me the other day, I'm really, uh, you know what? I'm really happy now. This is the happiest I've ever been. I'm the happiest I've ever been because, right. um, well, first of all, you are validating what I love to right. do. And the thing that I've kept, I've said for my whole life, if I could just make this make money. Right. Like really make it make really money. Really make, make money. And, and there have been many times throughout the journey that I've been like, it's just a hobby. Right. You know, it just can't, I can't do the volume. I can't put the energy into it. I can't, I can't, I can't, but I'm telling you, you can, and it's, I'm not any different than you. I do. I've done all the same things you do. And, and I may be worse. I'm very disorganized. I'm, you know, there's a lot of things that, um, make this, you know, difficult. And I, but if you want it badly enough, if you love it, um, it's, there's help. And listen, Poshmark, as a tool, as an app, as a community, they have given us the, the framework. You have uh, free accounting. You have graphic tools to see what you're making. You have downloads that you can use uh, to, to make your life easier, to do your taxes. I, I mean, use the app. Review the app. All of my previous e-learning on poshpowerproject.com is all there. That's all the orig origins. That's what you need. And it's really, um, just use it. Just and, use and the, also, the tool. And also, you know, going back, swinging back to what we talked about at the beginning, which is really important as we probably should wrap it up. We're over 30 minutes. But mm -hmm. um, th that sense of community, like reach out to each other, support each other. And that's what these um, share shows are a part about, about that. But Megan has... Um, you know, a, a, a lot of people that re, are, reach out um, and ask questions or they ask questions on the on, during the shows and we always give answers. There's always people are out there to help you. Everybody wants everyone else. Hopefully most everybody wants everyone else. To we success. should because right. then we do actually succeed. As you can right. see, it, if you care about each other and and how each other are doing and if the apps doing better and better and better, we all succeed. Right. And it, it may not seem like that right now. But it is actually true. If you reach out to other people on this app, it's going to people are going to come into you. It just it's how the algorithm works. It's it's designed that way. Right. And um, watch shows that you like. Listen to podcasts like this one. You know, somebody else, Erka, might have a whole different sort of take on her thing. She has but a she different is on kind one of our podcasts, so you can so find right. out about that, it. If you go back, <laughs> rags to resale dot com, right? Yep, where, rags to resale dot com, or anywhere you listen. Right. So you wherever you're listening to this, to go back. And one of them, uh, Megan's done some interviews with some people who are really successful, sort of Zoom Zoom type interviews. Posh famous. Posh famous, right? Is the theme. So uh, reach out to people. You know, ask questions. You know, this is a very supportive community, and I guarantee you, Poshmark. Is killing it right now right think yeah. about how many things you were selling or i think about how many things we were selling or she was selling before we started this compared to how much thing, how many things we're selling now posh park still makes their 20 and that's good for all of us right if they're doing well we're doing well so i'm sure all of you and they are discovering things and improving the app and we have some issues that megan has some things that w could work better and and all of these all of it is part of a, a and I'm taking a learning my issues process. to Posh Fest. She, she's gonna get, I get to talk directly. Not complain too much. <laughs> or make like, any first of all, let's go through the list. <laughs> so anyway, I, I hope this has all been helpful. I mean, this is just one story, as we said. Uh, there's a million stories out there. There isn't any particular story for success. But if you love resale and if you're passionate about resale and you kind of get that 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 thrill out of the search. And then the sale yep. and the profit that you make out of it, that's sort of the core fundamental. Join this group of people um, that are doing these lives and that are taking in these lives. And that's going to be a community, like a supportive community. There are friends out there for people, um, and friends who share a passion and do it in a really positive way that's going to no help No one understands you like we do. I, I know that no one understands my day to day in this basement all by myself better than you do and we shouldn't be on these islands when we can help each other right so that's it that's a good thought to end on positivity fun community support good and, business good business sense and just yeah. enjoy what you do and keep on doing it because it can pay off for you in the long run Love right what you do
poshproproject.com for all kinds of e-learning that Megan has on there and all kinds of information. Posh boxes, she can send you all kinds of things. And I'm at poshpro underscore Megan mm -hmm. on Poshmark. And we're Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, right. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. We are here with Boho. On and Monday. On Monday mm -hmm. with at Citizen Darcy. Please I'm upstairs follow her. in bed when the Boho yes, show so is annoying going on. Yes, it's so annoying and he's eating. I'm just, and I'm, I'm, call, I'm just commenting in there, making snide remarks. Irritating. It's fun. Yeah. And then Wednesday is Hand by Comte. Friday is the original Fry Yay. Bag Glam Show. Right. And they are $8 starts on absolutely everything. Right. And it's going to be a great show on this oh my gosh. Wednesday. We have so, so much stuff. I did the shopping all myself, so I know it's going to be great. All right. Well, people might be listening to this six months from now. Oh, that's right. Okay. And don't forget, Posh, at, at Poshfest, Megan, front and center. 2023. 2023 in San Diego, October 12th and 13th. If you ah, can be there, so you exciting. can meet her in person. She's like my little posh celebrity. Oh, my goodness. All right. Let's say All goodbye. right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us at Rags to Resale. Have an amazing month. Tips, live events, contests, celebrity appearances. Don't miss a moment. Follow Posh Pro Project on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Subscribe on YouTube and check out our e-learning courses for resellers at poshproproject.com.